Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Looking today at work done down a slope with, with and without friction. Now let's have a look at this hypothetical situation we've got here. We have a boy on a skateboard. He's traveling at 2 meters per second in that direction to start off with. Then he rolls down a slope that is 30 meters high, hits the flat, rolls along that for 10 meters, then hits a ramp which is 10 meters long and 5 meters high, and then he jumps over some of his trusting but maybe foolish friends who are watching him. And we want to know whether he will be able to clear his friends and to do this we need to know what his final velocity will be when he comes to the end there. So, do you get the problem? Normal problem, skateboarder on a hill comes down the hill, what will his speed be as he comes to the end of the ramp? And let us say if it is 20 meters per second he'll clear his friends, and if it's not 20 meters per second he won't clear his friends. So here's the magical number, 20 meters per second. Will he have gained 18 meters per second in going down this hill? Now this is not a, a very difficult question, but we have to keep our marbles and wits about us, and we've got to understand how work is done in this problem. So, let's have a look. Will his velocity change while he's rolling along the flat? Now we're going to do this without friction to start off with. So along the flat, will his uh, velocity change? No. Because if this is our man on his skateboard, his force downward, which is weight, is balanced by the ground pushing upwards on him. So the forces are balanced, there's no backward force. If our forces are balanced, then according to Newton number one, everything will keep on moving as it was at the same velocity unless acted upon by an outside force. There's no outside force, there's no friction, and friction is what we call a non-conservative force. Or, and it does work. A non-conservative force like friction can do work. So this is what you're going to get used to, this kind of formula, WNC, work done by a non-conservative force. But in this case, the work done is going to be equal to zero, because we don't have any friction. Equals our EK plus EP. Now, EK and kinetic uh, energy and potential energy are what we call mechanical energy. So if I had to ask you this question, with no friction, how much will his mechanical energy change by the time he reaches the ramp? By how much will his mechanical energy change by the time he reaches the ramp? Hmm, and there's no friction. Well, that's a trick question. Because his mechanical energy cannot change at all. Energy is conserved. So, Mechanical energy will not change, so therefore he'll have the same amount of mechanical energy at the end as he had to start off with. So I hope you're clear about that. And in fact, energy never changes, but friction can suck it a bit out of the mechanical energy. So his mechanical energy to start off with is going to be equal to, so let's start here, his EP plus his EK is going to be equal to his energy total at the start. So at the start, his energy total is going to be the sum of his potential energy and his kinetic energy. So let's work out what is his energy at the start. And we could say we've got our formula for EP and our formula for EK, so let's work out his total energy at the start. Okay, so his EP is going to be MGH equals MGH plus his EK is a half MV squared. So let's see. This boy's mass is 50, so he's going to have 50 times G, 9,8 times his uh, MGH, 
Okay, what is the height that he falls down? What is the, the his starting height? Well, he's at a height of 30 meters. So it's times 30. So that's his potential energy. Plus his, uh, his kinetic energy is going to be a half times his mass, which is 50. Boy's mass, 50 times v squared, which is going at a velocity of 2 squared. So let's find his starting energy, which comes to 50 times 9.8 times 30 equals 14700. Plus 0.5 times 50 times 2 times 2 equals plus his kinetic energy is 100 joules. And so his total energy is going to, to start off with, is going to be 1480. Zero joules. That is his starting energy. And if his mechanical energy at the end is going to be the same, then that is going to be the total of the amount of energy which he has at the end. So what is his final velocity going to be, well, we could say the energy that he started with is going to be, have to be the same as the energy he ended with. So let's, this was E total start. We can say here E total start is going to be equal to E total finish. So we now know that the E total that he started with was 14800 is going to be equal to the sum total of his kinetic and potential energy. So what is his potential energy? Now he's half a meter high. So it's going to be same formula, but I'm going to try and save space. Well, let's do MGH plus a half MV squared. So, what is his mass? Still 50 times G, 9,8 times, now his height is 5 meters, times 5, plus a half times his mass, 50 times his V squared. So, let's calculate that. 50 times 9.8 times 5 comes to 50 times 9,8 times 5 equals 2,450 plus 0.5 times 50 equals plus 25 v squared. 25 v squared. So, taking this to the other side, it becomes a negative quantity. So we've got, I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to say 14800. Zero, zero, minus 2450 equals 12350 equals 25v squared. Therefore, dividing both sides by 25, Divided by 25 equals 494 equals V squared 
Therefore, V equals the square root of 494. And the answer comes to 22,2 meters per second. 22,2 meters per second. 22,2. And there we go. We have reached the magical number of over 20. So he will manage to jump over his friends. We said at the beginning, if he reaches 20 meters per second, he will manage to jump over his friends. And we've seen that he's now 22,2 uh, meters per second. And so his final velocity is large enough to enable him to jump over his friends. So let's see how we did this. What we said is, if there's no friction, then his mechanical en energy does not change. So his mechanical energy, E total, at the start is going to be equal to his E total at the finish. We worked out his E total at the start, which is the sum of his potential energy and his kinetic energy. That came to started with 14800. So he must end with 14800. So we then say that he's his starting mechanical energy is going to be equal to his potential energy at the end and his kinetic energy at the end. And we worked it out that the potential energy was 2450, so we subtracted that from our 14800 and we got 12350. And then that was equal to 25 times V squared. And so Solving for V, we found V equals 22,2 meters per second. Now, in our next video, we'll show how we take into account frictional forces using exactly the same problem.